So as usual, we have some icebreakers here, some interesting questions to think about. And today we've got, how would you explain your current job to someone from the year 1700, which is something I saw on some sort of social media in the last few days. So I guess if many of us do computer things, this will be hard, but let's see how well we can abstract ourselves back down. Next is what's the best documented project you've seen? And do you prefer reading short social media posts or long blog posts? So of the people here, how would you explain what you do to someone from? I mean, I like the first one, actually. Yeah. I mean, that's what I wrote, so. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I somewhat guessed that that was um, one of us in some way. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, at, at least clear it's a research software engineer or yeah. a support person. I mean, I guess that is sort of general. Like, there's complicated machines or other tools. People need to use them, but aren't the specialist in there. and people exist to help with that. I think one of one of the problems that I see with explaining it to someone from the 1700s, um, I see my work at least very much as um, helping people to allow them to keep their specialization and not, um, well, having to worry about anything else or having to worry about nitty gritty things. Mm -hmm. While in the 1700s, I think there was not that much really think... specialization in science, at least. I mean, not necessarily in science, but in 1700s, we are already in the Industrial Revolution, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so very, I, very, very beginning. Yeah, I mean, the first Industrial Revolution is 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 sort of going on or done. The second hasn't started, so. You have the, you have yeah. people whose job it is to operate a, a big machine like a windmill or a, a certain part of a boat, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. At, at least mills. It's like applied you know. research and science and so on. Or, you know, so, something like that. What do you think the, well, the second job, reading letters and writing letters, is that a scientist making journal articles? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's extent. what a scholar does. Yeah. Organizing I mean, assemblies of people to discuss that conference organizer or something. Uh, email and chat. So, oh. Okay, so it could be any job, but you're so busy writing emails that you can't do your main job, which is yeah. a lot of Manager, people. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's also partly me. Mathematically rephrasing what people have already invented in 1700. What is that job? Uh, could it be some sort of programmer or other researcher that using math that's already been known then, but doing it faster in computers now or something. A lot of math, actual math research is rephrasing, rephrasing, oh, I can't speak right now, rephrasing stuff that people have already invented, but like making it easier to use and yeah. clearer. And uh, well, even making it usable because um, there was just not the computational power before now. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's quite a lot of stuff that, um, well, in theory would work. It just took too long. And now <laughs> computers are fast enough to, yep, now you can actually do this. Yeah. So if you're just joining now, we have an uh, interesting icebreaker there. If you registered, you should have the notes link. And, well, you can read the questions as well as I can read them. So, so let's played this game. But so today, well, Samantha will have some inter later. Um, how do you think the workshop's going overall, everyone here? Have you all been happy? I think it has been going well. Like the week one redesign 
was very successful, like looking at the questions that we got um, more into towards how researchers actually encounter version control and Git and GitHub on their journey. Yeah. And week two, I'm still a bit unsure about the you new know, exercise sessions because they have always been very nice. Yeah. And have gotten people into looking at these things themselves and trying to figure them out versus us showing it on stream. It probably depends a lot on how people learn best. Yeah. What is more beneficial? Very true. What do you and think? This is definitely helping us cover more ground and not feel as as busy and um not feel like we're always running out of time. I do hope that this also moves more to the direction where we can then support people after the workshop and make this more of a mentor thing. Yeah. But I, I suppose that means people joining uh, our Zulip chat and um, asking questions there when they have questions. Um, because of course, the um, during the workshop, we have the collaborative document, the notes. Mm -hmm. um, which we will not be actively checking after the workshop. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, my, my ideal would be for the second week. Imagine if we could do the workshop like we've been doing now, but then in the afternoons, we could arrange some sort of like, well, like the bring your own code sessions, which we actually have for Code Refinery but we should be yeah. doing as part of our own individual or institutions also. Like we yeah. could tell people, okay, next week, come to our garage with any of the questions from Code Refinery about how to do it, and we'll help you set it up. And, or, you know, help you do the exercises, test it out, whatever it may be. And that would be good. But it's almost time to get going. Um. If you're joining now, please write your job. How so you can see the icebreakers here. How would you explain your job to someone from year 1700? Um, and if you can't figure it out, write down what you do and we'll work together. Um, so I propose some sort of workshop for other teachers or people that run workshops that will discuss how we do this very kind of streaming workshop. So basically, I would help train people, train other people to do it. If this is interesting to you, look at the most recent Code Refinery blog post and see what it says. Uh, we can announce that at the end. I guess it is time. So, Samantha. I think you have an intro for us. Yes. Do you want to play the jingle, the short one? Yes. So welcome. Um, Samantha, I believe okay. you have our first intro. Yes. Um, are you all sharing my screen to the stream? There, there you go. OK. Uh, very welcome to day five of this Code Refinery workshop. We're almost at the end already. Very sad about that. Soon it's over, but we still have two days ahead of us. So week one of this workshop was all about version control from really the basics of uh, the basics of Git to collaborative use using GitHub. And then yesterday we started week two with an overview around the reproducible research. Um, we discussed how to record computational steps with SnakeMake as an example tool, uh, dependencies with Conda as an example tool, and environments um, with containers. And in the afternoon, we then took a peek into the FAIR research software development practices, licenses, and what you need to know about uh, like these kind of things um, related to your research code. So today we're going to look into different ways of documenting your research software, meaning from comments to uh, readme files that we now have been looking a little bit at already, 
and then to actually doing really nicely rendered web pages similar to the code refinery materials pages and how you can do that like with a few small uh, commands yourself. And then in the afternoon, we will take a look into the world of Jupyter Notebooks and that you maybe have already come in contact with during uh, computing classes or um, by like working by yourself. And um, here we're going to focus like on things that um, can make your research also more reproducible using Jupyter, for example. So even if you know it already, I think there will still be something new in that lesson as well. And then for newcomers today, uh, this workshop is fully live streamed. So you will all um, watch the sessions via Twitch. And um, if you know the workshop from before this year, we don't have any like dedicated team exercises in this second week, but we have uh, a lot of time for interaction via our collaborative document, which I will be showing in a moment. And then we plan to have a minimum of 10 minute breaks every hour plus a one hour break um, over, well, in Finland, midday lunchtime. So our collaborative document, you should have, or you have gotten the link um, after you register to this workshop, it looks something like this. And depending on how wide and how zoomed in you have this, uh, you will find a little pen symbol up top. For me, it's now up here to the right. For you, it might be somewhere here up to the left where you can switch to the edit mode if you want to add something here. Here we have all the links um, also to this welcome session and then to the materials and the archive of previous questions. And let's switch to edit mode for a moment. And then we can scroll down. We have our icebreaker question here. Today we have three questions that you can answer. How would you explain your current job to someone in the year 1700? Quite tricky one. Um, for me, I think the first one fits best. We have really big complicated machines and I have help, help people use them. So I try to help people use supercomputers. And um, maybe I can add a plus one here or a, a little dot. Um, what's the best documented project you have seen? Um, since we're going to talk about documentation, we can pick up on that later. For me, I think it's also the scikit-learn documentation that is really, really great if you haven't seen it. Take a look. And do you prefer reading short social media posts or long blogs? And this is now a voting system. So like I added my my little O here, I basically added that me too. And here I also, I prefer maybe often more longer blocks and also in the code, well, more, more often the longer source code to have everything at once. And then if you go down here, then uh, here you can actually add it, your questions that you have about the upcoming session. So you can see some people already wrote some here. You, so you can always ask that during the workshop and instructors will pick it up. Um, all the materials are linked from the workshop page and uh, you can like come back to it and look at them and you can also reuse them if you want to for your own workshops. And we also record this whole workshop. So for some days, the recordings will still be available on Twitch. And then after that, you can find them on YouTube. There's usually a playlist and then you can um, look through the lessons and uh, jump to the lessons that you're interested in. If uh, you need a certificate for this course for university, you can find instructions for that on our web page. And as mentioned before this session already, we have this bring your own code session. So if there was a tool during this workshop that you would like to start using in your own work, uh, you can come to these sessions and um, can take a look at these things with our experts. Or if you have question related to tools like SnakeMake or whatever, they will happen next, and next week and the week after Tuesday. 
And now I will give over to Jarno and Thomas for the documentation lesson. Floor is yours. Okay.